Hi, I'm Melinda Elmer with Century 21 Masters and the Elmer team. And today I have Troy Dodgen with 21st Century Property Management here. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the tenant laws of California, because it's a big topic of conversation right now. It is. As we talk, have talked before, this is a really ever kind of changing landscape. And especially since basically 2020, there's a, been a lot of change with this. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what's the statewide rent control? What does that look like right now? So yeah, the big one that's out there right now that's affecting a lot of people uh, as they're getting ready to sell their homes is AB 1482, which is the Tenant Protection Act uh, that was enacted during COVID. And that particular act had some very specific requirements about notifications to tenants and language that was required in leases in order to exempt certain properties from uh, being subject to that Tenant Protection Act and those rent protections that are included in it. And if those notices weren't served or uh, the language was not included in the lease, it can add some nuance and some challenge to selling a property. So um, that's where it's very helpful to have a property management uh, team helping you guide that along. In what cases are people exempt from uh, the statewide right control? So the exemption applies to owners of single family homes, uh, I believe one to two units. If it's a two unit, they need to reside in one of the uh, units and those need to be owned by an individual or it can be an LLC that only has individual members and no corporate members. So um, anything like a REIT or a corporation that owns four rent properties would not be uh, able to take advantage of the exemption, but m the majority of your single family and duplex homeowners are able to take advantage of that exemption. And if someone uh, does need to relocate somebody, what does that look like? So the relocation process is uh, fairly straightforward, but it does add some time and cost to uh, a property sale if you're trying to do a relocation. So you can do what is called a just cause for a cause eviction. And there's a few reasons that you can do that. One would be to remove the property from the rental market. So if you're planning to sell it to another owner, uh, that would be a case in which it would be removed from the rental market. The current owner can no longer uh, operate the property as a rental property once it's sold. And so that's a valid reason. Another would be a full renovation of the property that requires uh, the tenant to move out of the property for an extended period of time. They have just recently redefined the definition of substantial renovation. Uh, and even in that case, the tenant still has the opportunity to move back in once the renovation is done. So uh, it's not a case where you, you can just remove the tenant, renovate and re rent the the property. The other options are if the owner or certain members of the owner's family are planned to live in the property, you can do a just cause eviction for those. And again, recently, just a couple of months ago, they have put out a more clarified definition of that reason for a just cause eviction. So there's just a few ways that you can do it. In all of those uh, ways, it requires a 60 day notice, plus a one month relocation fee payment to the tenants in order to get them out. And when we talked about the exemptions, is there a particular documentation or anything that's needed for making sure people know that they are exempt from the rent control? Yes, there's a specific notification. Uh, the Tenant Protection Act uh, defines that notification. It's too late to just give it to an existing tenant. That notification needs to be uh, included in the lease agreement when you sign the lease agreement. So there's language for that. And if you're working with a realtor, they'll have a form for that in their kind of cadre of forms as well. Which of course you would also have yes. in your forms too. So the great news is about it is that Troy will help make sure you're protected if you are exempt from those rules and that you'll make sure that you're able to do what will have more freedom with you with the property if that's the case um, and make sure you do everything right if you have to kick somebody out too exactly. so and that's the big tricky thing right now and in, in the market is making sure you're doing everything right yep. and not um, doing anything wrong because you could end up with months and months of litigation or issues or things like absolutely. that. absolutely and the the landscape is always changing so we have a feed of legal uh, changes that we follow 
um, legislation that we follow through uh, assembly bill and, and through the legislation process to see if it's going to pass, when it's coming out, when it's going to be affected. And I, I don't quote me on this one, but I think we've passed more legislation in the property management industry in the state of California in the last three years than we did in the prior 30. So. Um, it is a it is a quickly changing landscape for legal compliance with property management. I believe it. That's why I defer to you for all questions. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. If you have any other questions, where would they put you? Uh, you can reach us at our eight hundred number. And, uh, I am at extension two or Troy at twenty first century pm dot com. And of course, you can reach me at 562-316-2915 or Melinda at theomerteam.com. Thanks so much for watching and please feel free to forward and share this with your friends.